Dear brothers and dear sisters, it's my privilege to come again on this Joy TV. I wish you a very, very blessed Christmas. I wish you also a joyful New Year. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus Christ, the dear Son of the Lord. Father, whatever you do, you said, Lord, do it for my glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen, Amen, Amen. Are you all happy in God's presence? Being Christmas time and all over the world, people are thinking about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I have decided, dear brothers and sisters, to bring you a very short message about the Lord Jesus Christ. For my evening's meditation, I have taken a scripture from the Holy Bible. It's taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning from 8th verse. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields, keeping watch at night over their flocks. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you in the city of David. This will be a sign for you, snuggly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and to people he favors. And when the angel had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened which the Lord has made known to us. They hurriedly off and found both Mary and Joseph, and baby who was lying in the feeding trough. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. May the Lord bless the scriptures which are read for you. These are not man's word. This word is written by the Holy Spirit. It was written many years ago. The Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never, never pass away. The words I speak to you is a word of encouragement. The word that I speak to you is a word of healing. The word I speak to you is to lift you up from the present situation that you and I are going through. Dear brothers and sisters, what the angels told them, don't fear means he's telling them you must worship God because God will take away all the fear. Let us read some verses from the Bible. What are the advantages will not fear God? Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 please. The fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Nowadays we see the fear of God is decreasing in all the religions. You know, I am doing ministry for more than 40 years. Then, early morning at 5 o'clock or even 4.30, ladies will take some flowers in a basket and they'll go to the temple and stand before the idol gods and throw the flowers one by one and they used to say mantram. But now, after 40 years, early morning, when I stand there on the road and see, not even one person in Andhra takes flower in the basket. The fear of their God has decreased. You know why? You know why? The devil has entered into this world. And people are not worshipping God. They are worshipping the world. They are worshipping all the bad things, dear brothers and sisters. So today, the fear of the Lord, I told you, is 
worshipfulness, to worship the Lord. But the angels told them, fear not. It was telling them, you worship God and all your fears will go away. We read one more verse. Book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures with turmoil. Dear brothers and dear sisters, I know the Lord is speaking to each one of us this evening through this telecast. Maybe you are sitting down with some kind of fears. I have written some fears from people nowadays. They fear about the future. Please listen. Now we are in this 219. And within a few days, we are going to enter in a new year 2020. Future. See, many people, they are afraid of the future. What will happen to my family? What will happen to me? Second, they have the fear of health. Some people are very sick into the year 2020. And the third thing, finance. This is the most important. The whole world, dear friends, whether you're a rich man, whether you're a poor man, you all need finance to live in this world. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Dear brothers and dear sisters, this evening, if you're listening to the word of God, Jesus was born in the little town of Bethlehem. 2,000 years ago, I used to wonder, please think, you know, when God created Adam, God never created him as a baby. When God created Eve, he did not create her as a small child. He had faith in them that they will never betray him, never disobey him. How Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. So that the second Adam or the last Adam which God created, he created that second Adam as a small baby, you know, inside the stomach of Mary. From his birth he was protected by his mother. He was protected by the angels. God knew that his son whom he sent into the world, he is going to die for the remission for our sins. I know you all know the meaning of Jesus, isn't it? Jesus means Savior. Second thing, Christ. Christ means the anointed one. He was not only a Savior, a God who was very highly anointed. He has the power for your finance, for your children. Please listen very carefully. What kind of fear is haunting you day and night? First John chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And one who remains in love remains in God. And God remains in him. Now listen. Verse 17, and this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment that we are is in this world. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. I don't know how many of you all could understand this loving word that God has given us this evening, dear friends. There is no fear in love. Have you seen this, dear brothers and dear sisters? When I was a small, about three or four years old, I used to hold the hand of my father. Being young, I didn't want to hold the hands of my father one day. Daddy, leave me, I said. He said, no, no, no. The cars will come. Buffaloes will come. Danger. No, Daddy, leave me. He left me. I ran before him, you know, and a buffalo in front of me. He looked at me with his staring eyes. He was ready to pounce on me. He was ready to attack me. And I turned back and came running and caught the legs of my father. Daddy! Daddy! Daddy, Daddy, save me. So my daddy said, you hold my hands. Hold my hands, my son. Dear people of Madras, dear people of this world, God on the cross of Calvary, his son stretched forth his hand, one hand to you, 
one hand to God. Are you ready to hold the hands of Jesus? When I started holding the hands of my father, the buffalo ran away, dear friend. My daddy took a stick and he says that buffalo, today you're not holding the hands of Jesus. You're not holding the hands of God. And that is the reason he has to face this problem. The Bible says there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love casts out fear. What is the meaning of perfect love? Love outside your heart. Love inside your heart, dear brothers and sisters. You must have love inside your heart and you must have love outside your heart. God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting love. Really, I tell you, there are three kinds of love. You have heard in the TV many times. One is God's love. We call that agape. Agape is a Greek language, means God's love. His love is everlasting love, whether you love Him. You don't love Him, but He loves you with the everlasting love. Dear brothers and dear sisters, this evening, do you love Jesus? Some people celebrate Christmas with sin, I've seen. They buy, you know, brandy bottles, whiskey bottles, and they keep it in their home. They go for midnight service for Christmas and New Year. And when they come back, father, mother and children will open. That's what happened in family in Burma. Horse wine was a wine that daddy, we, we never drank this whiskey or brandy. But horse wine is a very uh, famous wine in England. And they had to send it to Burma. And daddy used to buy two bottles of wine. After celebrating Christmas and New Year, come home, mummy, daddy and myself will open that, you know, bottle of horse wine. And daddy will take one peg, mummy will take one peg and I will take one peg. That is not Christmas. Celebrating Christmas with sin. Are you listening, dear people of Madras? There are dance halls there. There are pubs there. Oh my God, you will see in Madras. All begging it, come, come, wanga, wanga, ulla wanga, wanga. People with their outside, come on, come on, enjoy Christmas with sin. For that reason, did not Jesus did not come, dear brothers and sisters. And I tell you, if you will celebrate Christmas with sin, with drinking, committing adultery, and doing all sort of nonsense, you don't know the meaning why Jesus came into this world. Today, the Lord is speaking to you. My son, my daughter, don't celebrate Christmas with sin. I've seen for many years. Our pastor did not tell me. Our Lutheran pastor did not tell me. Then one day, when I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know where the horse, horse wine bottle went away. After Christmas service, Daddy, Mummy and my son, the only son. In Christmas, Daddy used to bring the poor people on the road and make them sit there. And he will serve them food and they would eat. My daddy used to like Mysore Park. He used to serve Mysore Park to the poor people, beggars. And after that, he himself will take the leaves and he will throw it away and give them some money. That was Christmas. Christmas time of giving, not taking, dear friends, not enjoying. Jesus came into the world for you. He was born in a manger. They didn't have proper clothes even to, you know, to cover Jesus' body. But you on Christmas and I on Christmas. Oh my God. Mommy, if you don't buy me, I will not come to church, Mama. No, dear friends. It's not your Christmas. It's not your celebration. If you celebrate this Christmas and New Year with sin, you're finished. Let me tell you. God will throw you away. God will cast you away from the kingdom of God. Happy Christmas. Happy you on the road shouting. They don't know what is the meaning. All drunken people. They're telling me. I stopped one fellow one day on the road. Hey, stop. I said, what are you telling? Happy Christmas. Do you know what Christmas is? I will guess. Don't tell me happy Christmas. You're telling it with sin. You're telling it with sin, I said. Can you bring happiness into our heart? Only Jesus. God is love. He's the only one. So uh, you, you, you think what I'm telling you. You must celebrate this Christmas with Jesus. 
Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. Jesus in the family, there is no sorrow, there is no sickness. Dear brothers and dear sisters, please listen very carefully. You know, God wants to deliver you today. You know, I told you Jesus was created as a baby. Adam was created not as a baby. Adam was created as a big man. And that man failed him. So God didn't want to create Jesus like a man. He gave protection in the stomach of the mother of Mary. When he grew up, his father and mother taught him Torah, the five books of the Bible, and took him to many places. So today I tell you, Christmas is a time to celebrate the Bible way. What does the Bible say? God gave his begotten son. What did you give on Christmas? I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Are you not ashamed? How many saris you have? How many pants you have? How many motorcycles you have? And you want another new motorcycle, new car, right? There are so many people are suffering in Madras. See the life of Mother Teresa. She never celebrated Christmas. She came on the roads of Calcutta. Very old lady. Walking slowly. And looking at the people. The leprosy people. The sick people who are disregarded by the whole world. She carries them. Brings them to her house. She cleanses them. That is Christmas. That is Christmas. You know, what I want to tell you today, with my hands, I'm asking the people of Metros, change your way of celebrating Christmas this year. There are so many people suffering in the hospital. When you go to the hospital on Christmas Day, take some sweets, take some food and sing carols. Don't go house to house singing carols. Dear brothers and dear sisters, good food, some clothes for the old people. In old homes, they are shivering in the cold. What I want to tell you today, Christmas celebrated in the Bible way will bring joy into the hearts of Jesus. Don't celebrate Christmas with sin. Don't celebrate Christmas with adultery. Don't celebrate Christmas. It's not your birthday. It's the birthday of the Lord. You must make Him happy. You don't make yourself happy. And lastly, but not the least, dear brothers and dear sisters, I'd like to leave a verse for you. This fear is a very, very terrible thing. You know, in the year 1965, the Lord appeared to me when I was working at CMC Hospital Velo. I was a manager of 84 rooms called the Hospital Annex. When I opened one empty door, Jesus was standing in the corner. I knelt down. Lord, what are you doing here? He said, my son, I'm calling you for the ministry. I said, Lord, I'm from Burma. Lord, I don't know anything, Lord. I don't know English properly. I don't know time or anything. He said, don't talk. I went and told my father. My father was working in same thing as an engineer. My mother was a teacher. They said, go, go for the ministry and put us in poor home where we can die there. Oh, I was crying, Lord. Please speak to my father. Speak to my mother, dear brothers and dear sisters. The Lord spoke to my father and mother. My mother came back and I gave her baptism. She left me for 30 years. She was in Kerala working as a teacher. My father, the Lord spoke to him. I and my father, we used to cook food. My father used to go house to house, house to make sambar, how to make fish curry. That's how I live. But I came up today. Lord has blessed me so much in my life. I know this year also I will celebrate Christmas with Jesus. Don't celebrate Christmas with bad things. Celebrate Christmas with Jesus. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, forgive us for celebrating Christmas with sin, adultery, drinking, dancing, flirting here and there. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Shouting on the road, but don't, they don't have happiness themselves, oh Father. Father God, show the people of Madras what the Christmas is. 
It's not a happy Christmas. It's a blessed Christmas. It's a joyful New Year, Lord. From today, let the Lord wish us, wish you a happy Christmas. Happy, you know, Lord. Happy means worldly things. Pastor Sudam taught us, don't say like that, my son. Wish the people, wish you a blessed Christmas because Jesus brought blessedness into the world. And don't say happy New Year. Tell them a joyful New Year because Jesus brought joy into the world. Father, we thank you for the word that you shared with us, Lord Jesus. Make us to be real Christians. Make us to be real children of God, oh Father. Lord, to put you on the cross, Lord Jesus. Make us to celebrate this Christmas with your blessings, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I like to sing a chorus because Jesus came into the world. I can face tomorrow. I don't have the fear of tomorrow. I can face tomorrow because in you all my fear is gone because I know yes I know he holds my future our life is worth the living because he lives, because he lives, I can face the morning. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know, yes I know, he holds my view. Is worth the living just because you live. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both and small He makes my life a me Make everything new He is my everything So what about you? He is my My all He is my everything Both great and small He makes my life complete Makes everything new He is my about you Viru Karata Tani Enni Viru Sittapo Dada Viru Me Kuya Vantayu Kali Manna Yen Paradu Ad 
Amen. 